I have a very important question for you all. And please listen closely to this question. Every time you get upset at something, ask yourself, if you were to die tomorrow, was it worth wasting your time being upset? I can almost guarantee that all of us have been upset at least once in our lives. And in fact, most of us have probably gotten mad once this last week. Getting angry is something that everyone falls subject to. It is in human nature to get angry, even over the simplest things like a sport. Today, I'd like to focus on the dangers of getting angry. If you will, join me in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. It's Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. So in verse 21, we see Jesus talk about murder. But as we read on, he switches to talk about anger. So we see him switch from this terrible sin to something so simple as anger, right? Well, let's flip to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. God says, do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of the fools. All right, so I want you to imagine this scenario, and it's very possible that some of you have been in a situation like this, but imagine you're at this huge event, you know, all your friends are there, and you're pretty annoyed because everyone's ignored you. You're off in the corner, sitting all cross-armed and everything. But you notice this group of people, and they're over there, they're laughing, and they're pointing at you, and they're looking at you. And so, because of how annoyed you already are, you kind of snap, and you start to walk over them, and you get mad at them. Now, what you didn't know was that they were planning a birthday party for you. So, you just made a huge fool of yourself because you let your anger lead you. Anger can lead to foolishness. Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter 37, verse 8 says, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. So not only can anger lead to foolishness, but it can cause harm to you and those around you. It can cause you to be cut off also. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 18 states, A wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger allays contention. When we are slow to anger, we will put away disagreements. That is what allay contention means. If we keep being wrathful or angry, we will cause many fights or disagreements, as it states when it mentions stirring up strife. Fights and disagreements can lead to division, and division can lead to pain or harm. Proverbs chapter 14 Verse 17 states, A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. So once again, we see another verse saying that anger leads to foolishness. But we also read here that not only are they foolish, they are hated. It would be hard to be friends with someone who's always angry. They're always trying to stir up a fight against you. If you would like, you may join me in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, 
that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you remember in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 22, we first saw Jesus mention murder, and then he moved to anger. I asked you if anger was something that we needed to worry about, if it was something super big. And clearly in these verses, we read a lot of different works of flesh. 17 works of flesh to be exact, and there are many more that, are, that could be stated. But if you notice, among these, bursts of wrath, hatred, and dissensions, which are disagreements that lead to discord, are all causes of anger. At the end of these verses, we see that it states that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So clearly, if you allow yourself to be angry, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And there's only one other place to go if you don't go to heaven, and that is hell. So now you realize the dangers of anger. While you could be the slowest to anger, you are still not safe. For there is danger being around anger. Join me in Proverbs chapter 22, verses 24 through 25. It's Proverbs chapter 22, verses 24 through 25. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man do not go, lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. Here we see God conveying that we must not have friends that are easy to anger, nor even approach a man that is furious. We also read in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26, that we must choose our friends wisely. And not only must we be cautious of our friends, but we must be cautious of where we go, as we read in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 reads, Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Now, the reason we must be cautious of all of these can be found in most of these verses, but the overall picture can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Paul says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Aristotle stated, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So then, if we allow anger to be a habit, then we will be one of anger. If we allow one of our habits to be slow to anger, then we will have an escape from anger our, by our habits. Join me in Proverbs 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16, verse 32 says, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a steady. Here we read that we can control our temper. If we cannot control our own temper, then why would God state that we could? In that same verse, we also read we must be slow to anger, and if we are, we will be considered better than the mighty. We must cease from anger and forsake wrath, as we read in Psalms 37, verse 8. Real quick, join me in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With Christ on our side, we can do all things, and that includes overcoming anger. Anger is a very dangerous sin that most of us do not consider, but God will treat it just the same as if you were to murder or commit adultery. If we allow it to rule our lives, we may not like the outcome. So before I go, I would like to ask you one question, and please pay attention, because if you remember it in a moment of anger, it may help. If you were to die tomorrow, was it worth wasting your time being angry?